Welcome to chapter 12 of Traditions and Encounters, where in this video we're going to talk about cross-cultural exchange on the Silk Roads, all about the Silk Roads. So the first thing we really need to talk about is what were the Silk Roads? The Silk Roads were a series of trade networks and they really started long before they actually existed. For example, during the Han Dynasty in China, the emperor actually established some trade routes throughout Central Asia, and it passed through nomads such as the Xiongnu, as we learned last time. And through these trade routes, he was able to sort of have long distance trade, which hadn't really been happening around the world, or even in China around that time, because transportation was sketchy. So what happened was rulers invested in constructing roads and bridges, so like infrastructure, to make this trade easier. And they also included sea routes, such as the Mediterranean Basin in Western Europe, and also oceans, such as the Indian Ocean around India. They also linked East Africa to connect Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean. So it was really a big deal that trade could finally become long distance, unlike it had been before. So the Silk Roads were really just a series of trade routes, and they were overland trade routes that linked China to the Roman Empire. And sea lanes usually joined these regions into one network. So the Mediterranean would link to the Red Sea around Egypt, which would link to the Indian Ocean, which would lead to China eventually. And trade goods, there were a lot that were traded. So silk and spices were the main products out of India and China, and they headed west. In Central Asia, there were large steppe horses, of course, and jade, and they were sold in China, where they were a valuable commodity. And in the Roman Empire, there was lots of art artisanal ware, such as glassware, jewelry, artworks, perfumes, textiles, just like nice stuff people might want. And the organization of this long distance trade was really conducted by merchants. And these merchants were of different regions. So there were Indian merchants, European merchants, all sorts of merchants. And they were able to do long distance trade on land and also the seas. And through these trade networks, certain empires were able to sponsor these merchants and have more power as well. So cultural and biological exchanges, of course, occurred along with the economic exchanges. One of them was the spread of many religions, so like Buddhism and Hinduism, they spread from their origins in India. So first they were present, Buddhism spread to Central Asia and China. It usually started around oasis towns, so like the small lakes in deserts where settlements might occur. And further, it spread to the steppe lands of nomads. And foreign merchants really helped Buddhism spread to China. And once in China, monasteries and missionaries were established and they were kind of the focal point of Chinese society. So that really helped their cause as well. And after them, there was the spread of Christianity. Christianity started in the Mediterranean basin, as we saw last time with Jesus. And basically what happened was missionaries like Gregory the Wonder Worker attracted converts through his wondrous actions. And these communities flourished in the Mediterranean basin as well. In Southwest Asia, Christianity also spread. So they would have big communities in Mesopotamia and Iran. And they would have a lot of converts until the 7th century CE, when of course we see Islam start to rise. More on that later. Also, we had Nestorians, you may remember from Old, old World Encounters, where these people really emphasized the human nature of Jesus. And these usually occurred in Central Asia, India, China, and they don't really exist today. Also, Manichaeism, which was the best example of religion spread on Silk Roads, there was this prophet, Mani, and he sort of took influences from Christianity and Buddhism, mashed it together, and he created this new religion. It really just struggled with dualism, which was the perceived cosmic struggle between light and darkness, good and evil, kind of like the yin and yang, but not exactly, because that's more with Taoism. So... It really was a means to personal salvation. People could be saved from their times on earth. And these people usually led an aesthetic lifestyle and high, had high ethical standards. So they were pretty simple people. And Manichaeism really appealed to the merchants who spread them because it really helped merchants sort of grab onto something since they were so away from home all the time. And of course, it started a lot in Mesopotamia and it also spread to the Eastern Mediterranean region. So this basically was the major religions that spread around this time. Also Manichaeism, 
It was persecuted around Rome, but it ultimately survived in Central Asia, although it isn't prevalent today, of course, again. So Mediterranean Sea, if, I, if you still don't know, is basically the sea between Europe and Africa. So what else? There was also a big spread of epidemic disease, and this is an important one. So there were so many epidemics because, of course, these people were located so far away, but now they were exposed to each other through long-distance trade. There were diseases like smallpox, measles, bubonic plague. It was really bad. Like in the Roman Empire, the population dropped by a quarter from the 1st to 10th century. And a similar thing happened to China as well. These diseases were really just devastating the merchants and also the communities that interacted with them. And so because of these epidemic diseases, we eventually will see the Han and Roman Empire start to weaken. Like they fell because of diseases. It's pretty crazy, right? But as we know, biological warfare is pretty devastating in history. And so the Chinese and Roman economies contracted and small regional economies emerged. So the Silk Road sort of went into decline, although we'll see it go back up later. So let's talk a bit more about China and Rome, because these are sort of the main two empires ne you need to remember for the first Silk Road mainly. So the Han state, there were problems with land distribution and rebellions inside. So what happened was generals took power and the emperor eventually became like a puppet. And eventually they divided it into three kingdoms and nomadic people came in and it sort of split China up. And eventually though, these nomads came in, but the Chinese people were able to turn these nomadic people sort of Chinese, and this is called Sinicization. And basically, they just try to make these nomadic people more Chinese, even though the nomadic people were in power. And eventually, Confucianism sort of like went down because political instability of occurred and people didn't always trust Confucianism when times were bad. And so Buddhism sort of went up and nomadic rulers really liked this foreign religion. <laughs> In Rome, we have the internal decay of the Roman Empire, so there were barrack em emperors, this is important. It's basically a series of generals who kept seizing the throne and overthrowing the current emperor. And what happened was one emperor finally had enough, Diocletian, and basically he divided the empire into two administrative districts, the west and the east. The west would turn out to be the Holy Roman Empire, more on that later. And the east would be Byzantium, which is really famous. And basically, a co-emperor would rule each district, and it just split the Roman Empire up so it was sort of easier to manage. There was also the Emperor Constantine, and he created the vast capital of Constantinople, located in modern-day Turkey, and we'll also learn more about that later. Eventually, though, Rome sort of went down because Germanic invasions caused the fall. And basically, there were different Germanic groups that were migrating to the Roman territories. So like one were the Visigoths, and these were agriculturalists who really took Roman law and Christianity and put their own spin on it. So the Roman authorities didn't like these Germanic tribes, but they used them as a buffer on their borders. So if other nomads tried to invade, they could have protection. Eventually, though, other nomads did come in. And one group was the Huns, and these Huns attacked Europe mid-5th century, and what happened was the Western Roman Empire eventually collapsed, and under this pressure, the Germanic people went onto the Hun side and went into the Roman Empire, sort of demolishing it. So basically, Rome got destroyed, except the eastern half of the empire, which would survive, and that's basically Rome from 476 on that we'll talk about. So Christianity... Even though Rome had fallen, Christianity was the most prominent survivor of the collapse of the empire. With Constantine's Edict of Milan, it sort of made Christianity legitimate, so it was no longer like a cult like it had been. Also, the Emperor Theodosius made it an even bigger deal by proclaiming it the official religion in 380 CE. And this really helped solidify Christianity's foundation into the biggest religion in the world today. And also, St. Augustine sort of put Christianity with Platonic thought, so that's the thoughts of Plato from Greek, you may remember earlier. So it sort of blended elements, as we see as well. And the church became increasingly institutionalized. So there were doctrines and practices that certain Christians had, but eventually they all became similar because they wanted to make Christianity strong. And they also had a hierarchy of church officials, so the top leader 
was the Bishop of Rome and he is known as the Pope and is still that today. Paul of Tarsus is actually considered the first Pope as we remember from the last video. And finally, as the Roman Empire collapsed, Christianity sort of served as a cultural foundation. So even though Roman culture was going down, at least there was Christianity to bind all these people together. So in conclusion, this is chapter 12, cross-cultural exchange on the Silk Road, the first Silk Road. It's around the time of the BC to AD split or BCE to CE split. So around the time of Jesus, and it really deals with two main empires. It deals with the Han Chinese and the Romans of Rome, Italy. So thanks so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one.